Hey, what is up guys? Going to be casting this game between Noob Man 93 here in the blue at 1349 versus Disturbed Angel here in the red at 1376. So our player in the red did go for a first turn Ophion, pretty standard play. Player in the blue opens up with a Gen X Undyne. And both these players are rated really high. These are the top rated duelists right now on Dueling Network. Uh, as you guys know, that the uh, ban list took into effect and um, we're seeing what uh, the top rated players are playing. Which, uh, you know, I haven't really casted any metagames in a while, and I think Mermails and Evil Swarm are definitely going to be still contenders in the future, but uh, I personally feel like uh, Mermails technically have that speed aspect, but the thing is, those those Sylvans, man, though, that deck can get really nasty, and it doesn't really get hurt by uh, Ophion nearly as much as I would say Mermails. Plus, uh, the Undyne builds, sometimes you just, uh, you open up with those multiple controllers and uh, everything just goes bad from there, but, um, I mean, you can still dump title. you can still dump the gun to actually salvage and get back, which is something I've seen a lot of players actually do, uh, so it's, it's cool to see how certain decks actually evolve in the game because, uh, you know, of the ban list, and uh, see if they are still viable, I mean, Pretty much the first one, Ophion, means that they can only like normal summon, they can set Lin. But the deck still definitely has options, and that's one problem that the Evil Swarm deck has is, uh, you know, there's really nothing to protect with a pop effect of something like uh, heavy infantry. Like, there's very few things. Um, maybe something like a safe zone, but opening up safe zone plus Ophion is is really asking for a lot. Butter player in the red happens to have a carry key on, and he's going to be able to go ahead and make another Ophion. And one thing that you yeah, you should keep in mind when you're playing against a deck like something like Mermel is they have very few back row. And that's interesting to see that he actually just kept this card here. I guess he was just trying to do some damage. So our player in the red gets over both monsters, and now he'll probably end up making another Ophion, because Ophion is the card that you go for in that deck. That deck it almost reminds me of a six samurai deck where it's just like, okay, I got I got this one card, I gotta make it as quickly as possible. Although Sheehan is still at one if I'm not mistaken. I don't think Sheehan's at two. Uh, Shin at one point was at three, which kind of got ridiculous during that format. But even if Shin went to three, um, he's like Dennis. <laughs> what? <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, even if Shin went to three, I'm not sure if it would be that viable. And our player in the red decides to go for an Abyss Dweller. That was an interesting choice instead of another Ophion. Uh, perhaps that would mean that it can shut down like everything. But the problem is uh, we see a Abyss Sphere activated right now. And let's see what he actually goes for, because I'm actually kind of interested to see it myself. And so I guess his plan right now is to actually crash both of the monsters. Personally, for me, I would have went for a monster to actually attack over it, I guess. I mean, he still definitely activate the effect regardless, but uh, I don't know, maybe the player doesn't play lead, and I can understand. Uh, lead hasn't been too popular for a while, just because it can be a dead drill, but sometimes at 2,700 attack points is just really what you need to actually run over some things. And it uh, looks like our player's going to be playing a Infestation Infection, so that'll allow him to uh, search for another Elsworn monster, which will more likely be another Carry Keon. Uh, this card with Carry Keon is just absolutely crazy. It just comes down to just, you know, free free cards to just, you know, one card X by Z's, which is definitely what the game is looking for um, right now. I think that, uh, you know, one card X by Z's is definitely where... Uh, it makes the deck a lot more consistent, and it has the ability to battle against faster decks. I mean, you can see the Evil Horn player, I mean, you basically only get one summon per turn, and it usually ends up being a rank 4 monster. I know you get multiple normal summons technically with a bunch of them, but for the most part, it's generally just going to be like one monster, one big monster is kind of coming out. And our player in the blue on the defensive side is setting a Gen X controller, so perhaps he was afraid of the back row, but majority of the time, if the other player has the option to actually go for a play, like I know the player in the blue can't activate any spell cards, so salvage might not have been an option. But the thing is, uh, if you're able to make a Draco sack against Evil Storm, you really have a good time. Sometimes. But the thing is, um, I mean, at that point, he didn't know that there was an infestation infection down. But the thing is, sometimes it's good to wait. So our player in the blue could be technically waiting as well. Uh, because the thing is, you don't want to make a Draco sack and lose a Draco sack to something like a Silent Honor's Ark. So uh, that is just one thing that he's got to watch out for. So now, let's see what the player in the red makes. I doubt anyone main decks multiple dwellers, but obviously you would probably run at least two of, you know. I think that that is an adequate number. But right now, it looks like our player in the blue might just have a bad time because uh, when you're setting a controller, that means you might not have any options because uh, setting Lind would be a much better move. It's not like this card in the graveyard exactly does very much for him. 
but uh, I've seen some other players actually play Call of the Haunted, and we see another sphere activated right now. So now he's gonna go ahead and go for a Lind, and let's see um, what he's going to actually go for for uh, his play. Um, fail. <laughs> okay, so he's gonna go for a Pike and Pike now discard, and he's gonna be able to get over that Ophion. That poor, poor Ophion, man. He <laughs> just can't have a break, man. And that's just one problem that the deck has. Uh, it's just like that. That popping effect is just so good. Now, uh, our player in the blue has an option to make a huge push right now. He can actually maybe even game him this turn. Um, that goes to the grave uh, during isn't it like your your opponent's next end phase, yeah. But uh, anyways, so uh, let's see what he decides to go for because he might be able to summon Marksman and if he gets that Marksman to attack uh, directly, he's going to be able to bring out Dragoons and deal a bunch more damage and potentially, like I said, beat him uh, if you can just summon another monster, I think. Um, or, I mean, a noble of defense. Let me bust up my calculator. So he's got 16 on board right now. If he can attack with a uh, Marksman, which is, ooh, is it Marksman 13? Oh, I can read right now. Uh, oh, well, I think he's going for a much more extensive play. And this is um, going to be a play that he could actually get punished for, kind of, uh, because Gun still has her effect and or Gundy as some of you guys like to pronounce it but uh, anyway she's at one right now which uh, some players are sad about but I definitely still think the deck is viable like that didn't hurt the deck nearly as much as it would have if they hit something uh, like Sphere. Sphere in my opinion is the best card. How are you doing the chain? Which is actually important. So he's gonna go Marksman uh, one on your face down then two on Abyssius, Megalo three which is well, you have to actually do Megalo first, I believe, anyways. So he's going to Torrential Tribute. And so Megalo would get his effect first. And then Gun would get her effect. So then he'll still be... Run Boy will still have something. I mean, that's what it comes down to. But he'll still be able to search for that last sphere. Or if he did play that uh, Squall, that is a card that a lot of players have all filled dropped in Mermails. He's going to be putting that card in defense position. Uh, perhaps he's afraid of a Mirror Force? I would have went on the aggressive side right there, uh, personally. I don't feel like this card is really going to help him against a deck that pretty much is going to have access to getting over this monster anyways. And I don't feel like that life points difference is going to make a huge difference right now anyways. But, I mean, you might as well get that damage in because... I mean, next turn he'll have to move it to attack position. What if he drew Mirror Force right then? Then it would have been more benefit to attack with it previously. So you can argue both ways on that. It's totally, you know, one of those times where you just have to decide for yourself. And Torrential Tribute is only at one. Now he's going to move it to attack position with more back row. Will we see him get punished for it? And that's going to be game right there. Uh, this is a really interesting matchup, and I really love watching uh, this matchup. So anyways, I'm going to be casting this entire set unless uh, they get stacked really hard. But anyways, thanks for watching game one, guys. Asian Eyes, signing out.